Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Cargon on a uh, an episode, uh, a rare one, where you may actually learn something. Uh, it's going to be covering how we did electric for our cargo trailer. Just a simple 110 service for, I believe, somewhere in the neighborhood of $100. Now, under the advice of my infamous YouTube coach, Dr. Steer Me Wong, he says, I need to give a disclaimer. Uh, do your own research. Get your own professional advice. You definitely don't want to follow mine. I mean, you may want to consult your brain surgeon if you do, because uh, there could be dire consequences. Now, uh, just to reflect on that, uh, in my electricity abilities and skill set, my friends, one, call me Sparky. Probably not a good thing. And this uh, hair here, this used to be naturally straight until I started playing with electricity. So that should be a hint. All right, so again, let's go ahead and uh, review this here. We'll get started on the focus on the build. As you guys know that watch this is always simplicity, functionality with some little bit of degree of uh, credibility or, or enhancement. And uh, we'll cover that here shortly. All right, and here's your uh, typical RV pedestal setup for those that have camped quite a bit, super simple. Right to left is your uh, 20 amp uh, household service, and that's all we're using with a little trick and a twist here. I'll explain that shortly. Your middle one is your 30 amp, and then the one furthest to the left is for the big boys, the 50 amper. And there's our connection there on the bottom, the uh, NOCO, NOCO, 15 amp. Uh, this happens to be a twin pigtail on the inside, so you have two female outlets that we'll cover when we go inside. I've got an accessory hatch above that, and we'll show you how all this works out. All right, so we're just gonna get started here by uh, plugging this in right here. And uh, <sighs> let me kind of let myself, guys. Uh... All right, guys, I got my uh, breath back. Uh, Boy, I saw a brief moment of white light, and uh, all of a sudden, I came to, and I'm just thinking that uh, maybe Terry's around here, gave me a little bit of mouth-to-mouth, -mouth and got me back. Uh, she was really good at that. Matter of fact, sometimes she made my heart stop. So, anyway, lesson learned uh, from my friends uh, Jimmy and Harvey. You want to make sure always that the breaker is off when you start it, get all plugged in, and then you flip it up to on. Uh, that just secures your connections and puts you in a much better spot. So anyway, back to the topic. There we go. Got 110 service running there. And got a little bit running over here on that separate plug. And this over here just feeds a uh, separate power strip. So if we want to charge our devices outside, I still use the printer. Uh, we got the options there. And again, uh, another trick here if you want to. You can grab one of these for about five or six dollars from Walmart. A little uh, 30 amp to 15 amp reducer. Go into the 30 right there. Run yourself another cord. And then I have that separate hatch. I can go straight inside. So if I wanted to run a dedicated heater or just a separate uh, small microwave or whatever. Um, got that option right there. Again, it's always recommended that you go with a 12 AWG power cord. Those will carry 16 amps, although I do use a 14, which will carry a dozen amps. We're nowhere near that. Again, inside, all we're using is essentially a electric fan at times and um, charging our devices, three phones, an iPad, and a laptop. And that truly is the extent. So let's go inside and uh, cover the uh, simplicity of the inside. All right, there on the inside is where the uh, Y comes in. Again, you have uh, one connection that splits off and goes this way. The other plug goes this way. And then on top is that hatch access for that uh, third cord. Currently, we have the uh, TV antenna coming in. At times, we're running the high boost uh, cell signal booster, which has a separate cord. Or again, it's big enough to bring through a water hose, a propane line, and again, an extra extension cord if you want to come off of that uh, 30 amp. Again, you're still going to be reduced to 15 amp, but uh, it gives you an extra option. Super simple. Uh, why is it amongst the food? Well, 
just thought if I burn the place down, it'd be nice to have a warm meal while I waited for the uh, insurance adjuster. Actually, anyone that knows about cargo trailers, they know that wall space is a premium. So this actually just sits back in our uh, pantry here. And uh, we'll show you where those run. Again, a little bit of a degree of difficulty, not too bad. There's the cord right there running up here, and you're connected up here to the uh, first power outlet. Got about uh, four 110 outlets and two USBs. That's for the kitchen, so you can have something there on the kitchen counter. Or back over here is the other one that also uh, is charging devices and or our uh, TV plugs in there with 110. And behind the fan is our high boost signal booster. It also needs 110. Both of those can run off of uh, 12 volt. We'll cover 12 volt at a later time and how we handle that. But again, this has been a super simple, very, very workable and we'll just do a little bit of a review here. You know, the install is super easy. The, um, I believe it's like a two inch diameter hole for the uh, plug portion. Just pass that through, three self-tapping screws and some caulk, and you're all set. And I believe that hatch above that was like a four inch hatch. You just search, uh, I think a marine hatch, it'll come up. Gives you option to pass through a small cable or pop it open. Pass through something big. Again, uh, that's worked great for us. And uh, what else can I say? Again, we're just keeping it super simple here. We've always done that. It's worked out really fine for us. And we do appreciate you stopping by and watching. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks.